Oh, and we are back on the air. Alright. Duty Finder. Tower of Babel. Finding group. That was fast. I'm not wasting any time. Not even gonna give, like, start of time for the stream. Just go in now. Do it. Yes, go in. Do it now. Do it. Yes. I still gotta clear part one this weekend, and then next weekend I gotta clear part two, and then BAM! Early access for Dawn Trail. And the healer is not readying up. This angers me greatly. This, this, why healer, why? Nice. Let's try this again. There we go. <sighs> right where we left off. Do 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 do. The Tower of Babil. Now or never. Go, 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 go. Better clear the train of sense before we arrive, but things might get nasty. Oh, we got a new member. I have to. We're slowing down. Our destination must be close. Look, captives. Help me free them. You may leave them in our care.
Lord's Preve. I'm here all to explain the three groups and divide their attention. My beautiful little boy will keep this tower free of vermin. Mm. Ouch, what are you doing, you foolish boy? The vermin are over there. Mm. Uh, Dr. Luge and Barnabas. Oh, right. I have to get back into my high skill palette and moves. After being a Dark Knight for so long. down. I can live, but I need to heal her alive. Power of magnetism. The alarm should be disabled now. With that, I believe we can use the lift. Oh, I lost the boots. Uh, yeah.
dun 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 I think that's the last one, so... So I pass the birds, then let us see who gets there first. Loot. underestimate my genius. Face of fear. I'm optimizing for DPS. Nothing quite like good old fashioned exclusives. <laughs> well, Xenos put me in charge for a reason. I'll have your hands for playthings. Best to me, but you're no match for Lord Xenos. Ah, oh, I rolled a one. Go! I shall deal with these whelps.
do, 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 do. Oops, I didn't complete that combo. Icon of Icons, Anima. Terrific roar tears at the fabric of reality.
Nice. Glory, glory, glory be. Rest now, your radiance. God wants hopes and dreams, eh? Alpha Nose not gonna say anything. Raha's not gonna say anything. Ali's not gonna say anything. What thou lie within these countless vials? Agony made flesh. I can love for one's nation give rise to such monstrosity. Push your redeems to chaos on order to see. Where's well, Zenos and Fen Daniel? No one wishes for such an abomination. I wish I got loot. I mean, I got swords though, right? Yeah, I got the sword and shield. Nice. But I already have the family sword. Have mercy on your soul. Come, the other two await. This ends here. Oh, hush. This is the best part. Enough! <laughs> oh, my 
mighty Zodiac, awaken from your slumber and descend! Some manner of magical defense? Trial? But how? The shackles that bind my adversary will not be so easily broken. Hydaelyn! Feeble relic of a forgotten age! Hark! Victory is mine! My lord, a slight change of plans. We shall travel to the moon and break this wretched barrier ourselves. Whatever it takes. Oh no, you don't. Oh, whoa. What was that? The final order issued by Anima to the Tempered Thralls. Should the Empire fall, the world must share her fate. Of course. Father lacked the conviction to give such a command. The abomination born of his flesh was but a puppet, and I the puppeteer. You madman! You monster! There's a funny joy in watching your flailing attempts to fight the inevitable. You're all going to die, and they're powerless to prevent it. must be on our way. You're welcome to give chase, provided you are content to leave comrade and tempered alike to die screaming. is yet unbroken. Zodiac remains bound. I have shifted the flow of ether and sent the enemy far from their destination. Now, I shall divert it once more. An ally awaits, and I will deliver you unto him. Seek his aid. Restore the seal. Zodiac must not be set free. Whoa. The Tempered are running wild. Not only those at the tower, but those back at the camp. The others are doing their best to contain them, but the situation is growing beyond our control. Leave them to die or give up the chase. Just like Van Daniel said. Garla wants fate is in your hands. 
I'm going after them. You're... you're going alone? You have our trust and our faith. I pray we have yours. I wouldn't entrust the fate of my people to anyone else. Our friends and the Tempered need our help. We will save as many as we can, I swear. Once we have matters well in hand, we'll join you on the moon. Until then, be careful. There's no telling what you'll find. If all of the Tempered are affected, Ulysses and his comrades are likely put up quite the struggle. We'll find a way to save them. We must. Only pray we are not too late. In the meantime, may the Twelve carry you to victory. My apologies, I was lost in thought. The devices of elegant design which leads me to think I was right about Van Daniel. No matter what he claims, he still has an attachment to the trappings of his past. Whether knowing this will make your path forward clear, I cannot say, but bear it in mind. Let us turn the task at hand. As Heidelin said, the flow of ether will transport you to Mari Lemmatorum. I must really hope this ally of hers can provide you with necessary assistance to restore the seal before Xenos and Van Daniel arrive to stop you. So you are ever one step behind, but I have faith that you'll make it up the difference. Know that whatever awaits you, our prayers are with you. Now go, beyond the sky. Beep up, boop, beep. before Dalamud was forged to imprison an Elder Primal. The eldest of them all, savior of the star, was sealed within a moon of his own. Souls sacrificed to grant him life still slumber and dream of the day he and we will be made whole. Here he waits, in this cold, barren place, his cradle and his grave. Silent lamentations and prayers of hope echo soundlessly to a sundered star, adrift and alone. You... You... with me. Hydaelyn's champion. up here, not even Midgard Summer. I... I... return. I must... return. Why? 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 Oh. Ah, bollocks, I've been silenced. Home. I want. I need. You 
mustn't touch. In cerulean halls, find me. Hello? Anyone here? No steps echo through the looming spire, save your own, but you never let sense presence above. Faded memories were searching. Apologies, I have been preoccupied for quite some time and am. Um, out of practice at conversation. Ever since the moon was created by Heidelin, I have served as an integral part. I am the Watcher. I am responsible for the prisoner and the devices that hold him fast. The Ark himself, a projection of the moon's core. Though rent asunder by Heidelin, he grows more powerful with every rejoining. Seven there have been, seven too many. And yet, for all his servants' machinations, he remains incomplete. The Fallen beyond salvation. No attempt would be made to free Zodiac, not until he is whole once more. But someone has taken action, the shackles that hold him nearly shattered. Six locks to his jail, great and grand. Gargantuan swords driven deep, brands to bind Zodiac forevermore. Five were destroyed by this would-be liberator. One of these I have restored. I strive to remend the remaining four, but my efforts are being impeded. Souls sacrificed to summon Zodiac, their manifestation consequence of waning seal. They labor in opposition to my work. They must be expelled for the preservation of all. Keeping Zodiacs in prison the right thing to do, I'll help. What is right and good? Ask a thousand souls and receive a thousand answers. I offer none. I am the Watcher and the Jailer. I am not the Judge.
Know this, Hylinon commands the forces of stasis, and this moon is the product of such power. So long as Saudiark remains imprisoned in this place, no more sacrifices will be made in his name, nor will those souls rendered up to his name fade into oblivion. Go, meet with these wandering spirits. Do what you think is right. You must confront those lost souls, yes, but you need not expel them by might of arms. A feather touch, a firm word, simple methods may send them away, faint echoes as they are. Where the strength of sentiment that drives them, however, oceans that do not fade even with the passage of centuries. And make haste, though yet distance, unwelcome guests draw closer. Huh. Ow. Huh. Ow. Where? When? How long? Oh, there's someone out here. Rowena? Oh no. No. No, my tombstones. Uh, that's not Rowena. That's just an uh, that's an imposter. Was it truly so long ago? We were happy, at peace with the star. We nurtured it, helped it grow, with our will, our creations. star's beating heart, its life, every soul a drop of blood flowing through its veins. To live, to learn, to create, to make better. The star flourished, as did we. Do you remember? As the whispers die, the final spirit fades. No shadows of time, long lost, remain around the drowning brand. <gasps> Doggo! My god, Menphilia, they turned into a dog. Well, hello, pupper. A usually lustrous dog is gazing at you. What seems to be fond anticipation? It appears to be waiting for you to follow it. Menphilia, what did they do to you? Follow the lustrous dog and try not to fall behind.
obvious. I was stuck on a rock. Moon fungus. A fungus among us. Temperamental spirit. Oh, dog's only regards the spirit that lurks near the brand. We and the star were fulfilled. Wanted for naught, mourned for naught. So why? Why did it have to all end? Uh oh. Fear. A death forced upon us. The injustice of duties and dreams left unfulfilled. The grief of unexpected partings. Swift as darkness, cold as ash. Such tragedy, yet no catharsis. Such truth, yet no consolation. As the whisper die, the spirit fades. All is silent and still around the numbing brand. The specter has been deflected. Jog is once again staring at you expectantly. And who are you to deny it? Follow it and try not to fall behind. I know I said no mounts, but I'm not picking a fight with uh, moon mantises. Not in the mood to fight Moon Cactus either. The dog finally regards the shadow that lurks near the brand. crumbling down such overwhelming despair in that moment we knew the end was nigh the faintest glimmer of hope remained we gave our lives that others may live we gave ourselves to zodiac zodiac our lord and savior Forge our world anew. Uh, uh, you guys are kind of crowding me. To live and love again. To become. 
become one with the star. Fill the earth and heaven with light. Birth paradise where fear is a distant memory. Pardon me, but would you be so kind as to step aside? Unmistakable color. Well, the soul of Asim. But not the friend I knew, I think. Nevertheless, you are you. Hmm. So, Emmet Selg meant for you to have it. Hmm. You seem surprised. Why might that be? Well, we meet again, Hithlodeus. Again? I do not believe I've had yet. I've yet. Yeah, had. Uh, I've yet had the pleasure. Oh no, I met a phantom version of you. Emmett created a fake version of Amorat in the depths, and we talked. You called me your new old friend. Emic Cell created a shade in my likeness. Not only me, but all of Amaron. <laughs> oh, very like him. <laughs> a slave to sentiment, even after an eternity. As you may have guessed, I am different from the shade you've met before. No mere approximation, but the original. A soul sacrificed to Zodiac. We remember in vivid detail the events leading to our purgatory. The plans, the plots for resurrection, Heidelin's intervention, and Zodiac's. And the stars, final fate. And then we drifted in a waking dream, our minds steeped in fog, until you came. I know not what you and your friends intend for Zodiac or the future of the star. Nevertheless, in you I place my trust and faith. In you I choose to believe, as Emmett Selk did. Believe in yourself, and all will be well. kept you from your duty. By way of apology, I will ensure that the shades hinder you no more. Protect the final brand. I will. Fare you well, my new old friend.
Doggo, we got a problem. The dog growls, agitated. Cry having a little slip to dog of war. Well, that's you, by the way. The dog nudges with nose. He definitely wants you to hop on. Well, don't mind if I do. Ride the dog? Absolutely. Well, 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 what do I find here? A couple of trespassers. <sighs> Damn it. In the nick of time, to savor the crowning triumph. Unbound and free at last. Arise, Zodiac! Where is he? Deprived of heart and will by the loss of dearest Elidibus. A creature of pure instinct. Wanting for guidance. But powerful. Oh, so powerful. More so with every passing moment. Such potential. Even in this incomplete state. Still the savior who delivered a world from certain doom. So, here we stand. You know my intent. Consume the god, then the world. Stoke your fury to a raging inferno, and dance among the ashes. Or perhaps you would face me here and now. A lesser but welcome amusement. Don't mind if I do. Yes. A taste to whet the appetite. Sorry to spoil the moment, but might I ask that you postpone the slaughter until I've said my piece? I promise I will be brief. Do you remember when I told you that I wanted to die and take everyone with me? I meant it. He jumped. Mm. 
Whoa. Uh, where the hell am I? We are the savior. We are the guardian, the keeper of natural order. We are the martyr, bestower of new beginnings. We are. Such lofty aspirations, and what sweet irony that the world's saviors will become the agents of its destruction. <laughs> Cannot end this way. We must return and be made whole. We are the will of the star, now and forever. For the greater good. For the sake of the world. Wrong, 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 wrong! Lies and delusion! The dead have no power over me. You will be silent. Silence as the grave! No more. We beg of you. The star must endure. Fight you want. I mean, they need help. Believe and walk in faith. Let the light of your soul shine for all to see. Not quite the outcome you'd imagined, but a fitting one nonetheless. Don't you think so, Hades? Allies from beyond the rift. Lend me your strength. Really, I'm off center. That bothers me a lot. Oh, really? Time elapsed five minutes. That's not good. Oh, it didn't play the intro. I 
I should not have left it go to that. Sorry, I had to do it. I had to dance. I know this is very serious, but still. At last, I am become Zodiac. Relax, dude. You don't have to provoke. The natural order overturned. How many people are dumb? Only All one. Existence bent to my will. Unless he's in the perfect me. Oh, go no, wait. Nope, he's in the AoE. Warp. My life's work. My master. Got him, Mr. President. It's caught in 4K. Bent 
to my will! Skirting that danger line, though. The great cataclysm faithfully recreated. Beautiful. From broken skies fall tears of flame. All shall burn. To see the end. Oh, good Lord. Well, you know what? I'm glad I joined that a, a, a party in a party in progress. It may not have played games so far, but I am seeing sprouts, so I'm pretty sure I'm getting people that are clear. Will you live to see the end? Someone made lyrics and they're great, and then the official lyrics, which for sung by the orchestra, came out, and it's lyrics from and the uh, fucking footballs, and it's I don't know the made-up lyrics, which is way better. All in existence, bent to my will. Uh, got another one cut 4K, can't do... Will you live to see the end? You do not have to provoke off me. It is not extreme. You know what? Screw it. I'm keeping damage going. Oh, goodbye. Pew. Did I get a phone stack? Yes. Is it worth it? Absolutely. He's dead. Oh, well, no one got their calm. Alrighty then. 
I got comms. But no one got my comm. Well done. My preparations are complete and I stand ready to seal Zodiac once more. Withdraw from this place. The teleporter will deliver you to safety. Did I cloud it? Let your murder mark the beginning of the end. Did I cloud it? of ten millennia to justify my answer to the question. No value in their existence. Not a wit. For all that I looked. None that I did see. 
A final chance, then, for Heidelin and her faithful. In Cataclysm, prove me wrong. I snare. All shall return to nothingness. As was your will, Emperor Zande. I, the star, and every living being, consign to your oblivion. Oh, I'm fine. Stop. Uh huh. Steady. <sighs> hey. Hello. You saw it too, yes. The blue star below, thrown into turmoil. Yeah, what? What was that? Then it was no illusion. All was truth. With the death of Zodiac, the laws of nature over which he presided have begun to unravel. The final days are upon us. What you witnessed was an omen granted by the Echo. A vision of the horrors to come. Time grows short. with you this day. Slavering beasts gather at your gates, ravenous and eager. Already you turn to them and away from me. I must go forth once more in search of power far beyond the might of Shinryu. Power to make your heart run over with rage. For the eldest of primals was a betrayal of promise. A pathetic creature incapable of inspiring true despair. I... That's what I crave. Pure, unadulterated despair.
hope will win the day. We shall see. He has got to get himself a hobby. I sense his presence on the moon no longer. If you need not follow, then I beg you stay and listen to what I have to tell you. Of Zodiac and the end of all things. Before we speak at length, I believe a change of surrounds is in order. I have more than ill tidings to share, you see. I sensed others arriving not long ago. Though my communions with Heidelin have grown infrequent, I have learned enough from her to know these are your comrades. As luck would have it, they have already reached my abode. Come, let us join them. Not running all the way back. Ah, ow. Hey guys. Thank goodness you aren't harmed. We did what we could to subdue the tempest before making our way here. Not without casualties, unfortunately. Some few detonated explosives killing themselves and others. The contingent healers had their hands full tending to the injured and they enthralled when we took our leave. Lest you wonder, Mistress Kryle hath been delivered unto their care, serving as conduit for Hydaelyn's power hath taken its toll, but she will recover in due course. As for Alphano and Alizé, they insisted on remaining in Garlemald while the three, we three rushed to your aid. It appears, however, that matters have been already come to a conclusion. But what manner of conclusion, if I may ask? And is this the ally whom Hyland and Bade you seek out? He is not unlike the shades of Amarant. <laughs> not unlike, perhaps, but not the same. I was created by Hyland, together with this place. It has ever been my duty to keep vigil over Zodiac, or rather, it was my duty. Alright, so let me fill you guys in. Unfortunately, Fandaniel fandangled me and I clouded it. He became control of Zodiac and I fought him. Exactly as he wanted. And I said, the only fantasy here is yours and we shall be its final witness. And I struck down Zodiac. Well, Fandaniel finished the job though. Then Zodiac is no more. Mm-hmm. And not without consequence, I am afraid. For now the delicate weave of the star preserved by his presence will begin to unravel. If you mean to avert the final days, you shall have need of... Uh, are you alright? Uh -huh. My attempts to forestall Zodiac's reliefs has but exhausted my strength. If you might allow me to rest a short while, I will share with you all I can. Please do, you need not exert yourself on our account. These crystals contain records of your time here, yes? May we peruse them while we wait? Uh. By all means, if you would review them chronologically, might I suggest you begin suggest beginning with those on the upper floor? I shall leave that to you, Naren, while I see what can be gleaned from the crystals on the lower levels.
para da 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 You gaze into the crystal. Ancient knowledge of Zodiac flows through your mind. No abnormalities detected. No abnormalities detected. No abnormalities detected. They appear to be records for a long, lonely vigil on the moon, dating back to the beginning of Zodiac's imprisonment. Joining the Zodiac's Thirst for Freedom crew, as did the strain on the brands. Maintaining Zodiac's imprisonment appears to have taxed higher than greatly. Hmm. As you gaze into the crystal, knowledge of past rejoins flows to your mind. The records describe the Watch's efforts to prepare in the event Zodiac broke free from his prison. The records go on to describe maintenance carried out regularly with the Lopperts, though it's not clear who or what they are. As you gaze into the crystal, a record of unexpected visitor flows to your mind. The records of the watchers, musings, will, and limits was spot on the moon, though clearly not for the first time. It is clear he and his brethren have a keen interest in freeing Zodiac from his prison, and yet they have made no attempt to destroy the brands. Perhaps they prefer him remain hidden from mortal eyes until the final rejoining. Perhaps they realize we would never dare bring harm to Zodiac so long as he remained in prison. Do do do. Ow. Now. Do, 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 do. Did you learn anything of import? Ah, uh, just a few things. Nothing too special, though. So, as to be suspected, maintaining the brands requires a great deal of our energy and focus, and the cost has grown higher with every rejoining. That'll explain why contact with her has become rather infrequent since the seventh Umbro Calamity. I too made a rather startling discovery. This heavenly body we know as the moon was in fact created by Hydaelyn. When the Watcher said he was created together with this place, I thought he meant as only this facility. Truly, Hydaelyn's powers are far beyond anything I could have imagined. I thank you for affording me this short reprieve. It is we who should thank you. The records stored here are nothing short of extraordinary. There is much we could learn of Zodiac and his imprisonment. But perhaps you could offer us more focused guidance. Pray, tell us of the calamity that came before and comes now again. Long ago, before the great sundering, there was but a single world, Aetherus. One day from within the earth, a terrible cry issued forth, affecting a profound change in all manner of life. We were not exempt. Our creation magics ran rampant, giving shape and form to thoughts of hopelessness and despair. At first, the phenomenon was limited to a single region, but quickly, so very quickly, it spread and engulfed the whole of the star. Were the ancients ever able to deduce its source? They were not. 
However, the convocation struck upon a method to predict what the next corruption would manifest. etheric energies which flow through all of creation in the form of various currents. The currents which course through the land and seas. The, those which flow through the very air. and those of a celestial nature, which encompass both our star and this moon. Celestial currents. I cannot say I am familiar with the concept. Nor would I expect you to be. Few scholars of our time knew of their existence. Their invaluable knowledge helped us to better understand the nature of the Calamity. Like the terrestrial ones of Earth and Air, the celestial currents form a vast network but the ethereal distribution is not consistent. The Convocation soon realized that the inciting incidents occurred in regions where the flow was weakest. Correlation without ca clear cause, ultimately. Nevertheless, on closer study, a stagnancy of ether was observed in nearby currents. And so they sought a means to harness the forces of darkness, of activity and growth. Thus was Zodiac conceived. No less a power than a god's could set right the laws of nature and quicken the flow of ether within the star. Precisely. With the advent of Zodiac, our end was averted. Emmett Selk claimed that those who summoned Hydaelyn did so because they saw Zodiac's power as a threat. Is that true? Indeed, there was a faction opposed to Zodiac's creation, but their aim was never to unmake him. They understood the continued preservation of the natural order was dependent on his very existence until we could identify and address the underlying cause of the final days. He would need to remain or his departure would set in motion those apocalyptic forces once more. Hydaelyn recognized this as well so, so, rather than destroy, she sundered Zodiac herself and the star into lesser reflections than she might confine him in this place. But I... I could have sworn she beseeched me to banish the darkness. Perhaps she did. But with all beings, intent is not always in accord with spoken word. Hydaelyn and Zodiac are both constructs of man, approximations of perfection limited by our own imperfections. 
Zodiac was, without question, the more powerful of the two, having been born from the sacrifice of half of Therese's population. Thus was it necessary for Hydaelyn to commit herself wholly to his defeat. Still more effort was needed to confine him. Maintaining the brands taxed her greatly. With what power she dared spare, she cried out to any who might listen, and offered her blessing to those who heeded her call. Though it was likely within her power to do so, I believe she did not wish to speak of Atheris and her history. Like Zodiac, Eidolon's purpose is a reflection of her creators. They wish to look to the future and not linger in a prison of the past. The Asians set in motion seven rejoinings before we came to oppose them. How many more worlds would have been lost had we not placed our faith in her? How many more souls living in the present would have been snuffed out for the sake of those long dead? Well, in light of recent events, I see no reason to doubt your words. And even if Hydaelyn is not a god in truth, if Minfilia believed that we should trust in her plans, then I choose to do just that. Which brings me to a rather important question. Let's suppose we try but fail to stop this second coming of the final days. Should the source fall, what will become of the other worlds? The nomenclature is more fitting than you know. Bring ruin to the source and its reflections will share in its fate. Quake. Ah, it is ready. This way, if you would be so kind. A beautiful sight, is it not? Yes, but what is it? Idolin knew better than any that her power was not absolute. Indeed, she has ever struggled to hold Zodiac and his faithful at bay. She feared the worst and so made preparations in the event of his demise there would be a contingency the moon is more than a prison it is a vessel capable of bearing the people of Atheris to safe harbor you need not go far to find its pilots in fact I should be happy to take you to them and fulfill my final duty as Watcher in the Dark. The time has come for you to be on your way. The crater at the heart of Mare Elementorum, where Zodiac was imprisoned, is not so easily traversed, however. Let us call upon Argos, the familiar whom you met earlier. He should have no trouble bearing you across. As Hyland created me to be the jailer, so too did she create Argos as the guard. It is his nature to appear when needed, and yet, 
he is nowhere to be found. Strange. Mayhap the imbalance of ether has affected him. Let us make for the crushing brand and attempt to call upon him there. You need but recall the path you walked with Argos before and you will find your way. If he labors in service to Highland's plan, I see no reason to do as he suggests. Shall we make for this crushing brand then? Yeah, I'm gonna fly. The place we seek is just up ahead, at the Chloros, Chlorophos Grot. You see, Argos cannot manifest without sufficient concentrations of ambient ether. You would be hard pressed to find a greater confluence than inside this cavern. Follow me. Yes, here will do nicely. The lunar spongoi, 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 draw ether from the ground, which is then dispersed in the air. At present, however, the ambient energies are not quite sufficient for Argos to manifest. Might you be willing to spare of your own to help the spongoi along? Sponge goy me bob. You're taking all me money. Oh, you're taking all me ether. <laughs> but Mr. Krabs. Ah, there you are, Argos. Argos manifests in a flash. He seems glad he seems glad to see you again. Most fascinating creation of Hydaelyn's, would you not agree? Should the need arise, he's even able to create reflections of himself on a whim. Though I assure you, it was no reflection which accompanied you earlier to the brand. No, Argos was quite eager to be at your side then, as he is now, it seems. I cannot recall when he showed such affinity when he last showed such affinity for anyone. Indeed, I thought him more likely to shy away from you and your companions. Perhaps it was more of a sense of duty that compelled him to aid you before. As for your companions... Unexpected, but greatly appreciated. I believe we are all ready. Then let us return outside that you may cross the chasm. destination is the structure across the cradle of darkness but climb on Argos is back and he will take care of the rest once you arrive it should not take you long to find the ship's crew the facility designed to rouse them from their slumber and the effects of zodiac's destruction heed their counsel together you may guide the star and its people to a kinder fate this is where we part ways but know that I shall ever be watching and praying for your success
Our allies' assurances notwithstanding, we cannot be certain what awaits us on the other side, so perhaps it would be best if we not all go at once. I propose the two of us cross. Oh, thank her to Wait here. Not yet. I was expecting something a little more intimidating and less man's best friend. To whom would Heidelin entrust the command of so great a vessel, I wonder? We onward. We can easily yet permeates from the crater. Remnants of zodiacs, most like. Just a little further. This structure is enormous, though hardly surprising given the size of the average Amara team. Apologies for the wait. Right then, let us head inside and... oh? Most intriguing, a means by which he conserveth energy, mayhap. Well, I certainly wouldn't want him to plead out of existence on our account, how flat he's been. Thank you, Argos. We'll take things from here. If Argos is to remain without, let us not keep him waiting over long. Right through the door. The big, big door. The big door. A moonship pilot should be around here somewhere. Is that right? Bonoy.
Look lively, everyone. I know, I know. This 1,243rd inspection is a mite ahead of schedule, but it is of the utmost importance. For Zodiac, alas, is no more. As of now, our mighty moon has a new purpose. To bear the people of Aetherius to safety! Our time is come, my friends! We must be swifter than swift! There is much to do before our guests arrive. I expect your workstations to be immaculate. And don't forget to relay our signal to Aetherius. Questions? Yes? No? Maybe so? No? Then hop to it! It is a rather curious crew she hath chosen. Their endearing forms intended to ease the passengers' hearts, perhaps. Perhaps? It must be the Loprites mentioned in the Watcher's records. Not at all what I expected, but the Watcher did bid us heed the council. Assume the one who gave a rousing speech was the leader, though we might have to ask him what to track them down. Come on then, let's be about it. Oh. Ow. <laughs> Leader of our crew, not me, I'm afraid. I'm Singing Way. Uh, Singing Way is the name. I'm in charge of the construction and maintenance of the atmospheric circulation system. Only the crispiest, cleanest air for the people of Atheris, and that's a promise. Sleeping way. My job is. Uh, uh, oh. Perhaps I better ask. Whoops. I think you already tuned all the etherites. That's why you're flying. Oh no, I gotta do that again for Dawn Trail. Ah, here she is. Uh, how in the... When did you get here? Who let you in? Why wasn't I told? <laughs> Dang it. I kind of want to hum. Why is this not an emote? What's that supposed to be? You humming? One can even cop that there is atrociously off key. They sound more like this. As leader of the Lobberts, I cannot allow substandard attempts at mis musicality to go unremarked, even if you are a guest. But being of the magnanimous sort that I am, I forgive you this once. Found the leader. Well, well, looks like you beat us here. Your friends, I take it. Is this all of them? <clears throat> A group comprised entirely of children? What must the parents be thinking? This is a nursery, after all. Though perhaps we should build one. Or did we build one already? No matter. You need to worry your pretty little heads. All will be well, I promise. 
But goodness me, we shouldn't be standing about gulping. It must take you to meet the others. If you can run along back to the entrance, you'll find the path that leads to the central platform to the upper floor. There's no wrong way to reach it, but it's large, glowing ball at the center, and you should find yourselves lost. I shall give the others and meet you there. Well then, back to the upper floor it is. I just want to check something real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, including this one, eight. Eight more quests. of her most vital plans. You might say I'm her right paw. Nothing weighs the name, map reader and navigator of the heavens. Pleasure to meet you all, but I'm still trying to make sense of this. Confusion and bewilderment are completely understandable, fear not. I shall walk you through it. The people of Etheris, through no fault of your own, I'm sure, set in motion a series of events that, unfortunately, culminated in Zodiac's obliteration. Acutely aware of the imminent crisis, your parents set to you little ones on ahead while they began the necessary preparations. Ah, uh, parents? Still not following? No? Very well. I shall elaborate further. Whoa. Here we have Etheris, your home, and the moon where we are now. Without Zodiac around to keep things lively, so to speak, the celestial currents of the star have doubtless begun to degrade. A calamity of apocalyptic proportions will be visited upon Atheris, bringing an end to all life. Very sad, that. So too hath the Watcher claimed. By thine unperturbed countenance, I gather this eventuality was anticipated. The doom and gloom? Oh yes, quite expected. Imagine, if you will, that a Therese is a delicious carrot that I've forgotten to eat and left out in the midday sun. The most earnest wishes or prayers will not stop it from rotting to the core. So sadly, there's nothing to be done but to abandon said carrot, Etheris, in case the metaphor is lost on you, to its grisly fate. And this moon will serve as the vessel to deliver us to a new home. Just so! We will gather up as many people, supplies and resources as our stores will hold. And then, once everyone is aboard, it's off to another star! Easier said than done, admittedly. For one does not simply hop from star to star on a whim. Which is precisely why we've spent countless years constructing the most propulsive of propulsion systems! We ought to make it to our destination in two shakes of a rabbit's tail.
Impressive technology. I dare say it is beyond anything we have ever seen. No need to shower us with praise. All we've done is faithfully carry out the instructions left to us by Hydaelyn. Back in the old days, when she was still just Venar, she was dedicated to the study of the world and its inner workings. And the Watcher, the real one, not the simulacrum you met, was one of her fellow researchers. We and this wondrous vessel, masquerading as a moon, are products of their knowledge and know-how. There's certainly more to you all than meets the eye. Might I ask where exactly you intend to take us? We identified a few promising candidates for resettlement some time ago, but we cannot guarantee that they are fit for habitation. Moreover, the ship can only travel in short bursts. We intend to go down our list, hopping from star to star, until we find one suitable for resettlement. No need to worry, though. The vessel is being refurbished with accommodation for an extended stay as we speak. While we did have to rely upon outside help to determine what amenities were essential, I dare say we have risen to the challenge. Help? From who? <laughs> From you and yours! Who else? Each time we work to perform regularly scheduled maintenance, we were greeted by the resources you sent us. What better way to learn about preferences and proclivities of our present-day charges? Ah, oh, but you're still adorable little children. Perhaps your elders were responsible for the deliveries. I'm not sure what led you to conclude otherwise, but I can assure you that we are all grown men and women. And I very much doubt my elders know this place exists. Much less how to send you so much as a starlight missive. What? Then who in blazes let you on my moon? Uh, the Watcher did. You, you see, there's a whole shenanigans thing. Heidelin herself led you here. Uh, and yeah, and Heidelin told me to come. You don't say! Well, that's really not children. Then why are you so small and stunted? Like little baby carrot people. Well, Amorotines were a great deal taller. In the present day, persons of such prodigious size are exceedingly rare. So, you're saying everyone's not like the Watcher? Oh, confound it all! Someone could have at least scribbled a note about your profound miniaturization! That tome in thy possession. Oh, this? One of the first books sent to us. A compendium of the people of Atheris, with a few blank pages at the back for minor corrections and updates as needed. The sum total of our knowledge of your kind is contained in these pages. I thought it was abridged and made small for our benefit, but... This isn't a regular-sized book, is it? It is. Building way, can you hear me? Yes, we're all very busy. Oh, sorry. Change of plans. I need you to rebuild the domiciles at one third the scale. <laughs> Yes, all of them, and butt me no butts. See to it with all speed. Perhaps you could tell us a bit more about your terrestrial collaborators. Yes, yes, in due time. But first, I'd like to hear more about you, if it's all the same. I'd rather not risk any other complications due to outdated knowledge of our passengers to be. Right then, 
now that you're here, we need to teach you all we can about your people. Uh, need you to teach us all we can about your people, and quickly. It won't be long before the final days are upon us and all the terrible grandeur. So it is imperative that we at least prepare to receive our passages to be. If there is anything, anything at all that may displease them, it must be addressed post haste. And address it we shall. Here at Best Way Barrows, we have assembled everything required to offer our guests the best way forward. <clears throat> We have produced a myriad of amenities which we understand to be essential to day-to-day -day living. I wish to hear your opinions on them. I'm sure you all worked up an appetite, so why not start with the foodstuffs? Even at the Caratorium, we'll see about filling your bellies. She does not want for enthusiasm. The notion of a theorist brought into its core being a matter of course is rather concerning, though. Nevertheless, let us take this opportunity to learn more and more about the Lopperts and this vessel. Caratorium. Welcome to the Caratorium, where you create prototypes of various sundries which require the soon to be which are required uh required by our soon to be passengers. Allow me to introduce the head of food test production, a cooking way. Pleasure to meet you all. Our work has involved no small amount of trial and error, but after many, many cycles of pain and sticking labor, I dare say we have created the. Uh, uh, you know, what? I'm gonna make him fucking like uh, Ramsey. Our work involves no small amount of trial and error, but after many, many painstaking cycles of labor, I dare say we created the finest cuisine our guests could ask for. I've learned all about the essential nutrients. For a healthy and balanced diet from the reference materials we received, why I've practically worn the words from the, those invaluable pages. Naturally, we've also considered ease of growth and production. We will not want for ingredients. If you insist you try some, we are freshly stocked prepared on account of well being we just woke up and we're all quite famished. I hope uh, I hop along the platforms here and you'll find a storage unit filled the best thing with delectable delights. Help yourself to anything you like. Color assorted carrots. The unassuming orange carrot. From frond to tip, no scratches or blemishes mar this immaculate specimen. Nevertheless, it's not for excessive length and girth. One might think it was an ordinary carrot. I will eat this orange carrot, for I have eaten all of them. On second thought, you like to take the large for now. Due to its dark qualities, it would be prudent to ask Cookingway whether or not it's safe to eat first. So, did any of our selections set your mouth to watering? Even Viera are like to swoon at the sight of so grand a carrot. That, or be offended by all those who assume that they would. Uh, what's up with this carrot? Ah, uh, yes, uh, yes, a fine choice. One of my personal favorites, actually. Please dig in, I'm eager to hear what you think. Okay, eat the obscenely large carrot. With great trepidation, you take a bite of the carrot. There's a satisfying crunch as you sink your teeth into the orange skin. A warm, tingling sensation runs down your spine, and with the second bite, a wave of euphoria washes over you, and you drown in bliss. Alas, as you finish the carrot, elation fades, leaving you with a desperate craving for another carrot. Oh, I got buffed. Carrot of happiness, you find yourself in an unusually good mood, with a sudden craving to eat more carrots. Well... Oh hey, when did I get this? Oh, I can't eat that. 
Can't eat that. Can't eat that. I can't eat that either. What did you think? Unlike anything you've ever tasted, yes? The carrot of happiness is full of bursting with nutrients and it's guaranteed to leave you feeling satiated. The staple among us loperts. We have plenty of other varieties too. Bleeding carrots to improve blood flow. Dream carrots to help with sleep. So you see, we have a carrot for every occasion. Uh, these carrots are extraordinary. Then why do you seem so disappointed? If they're lacking somehow, we need to know. I take it you had a wide assortment of carrots to choose from and not else. Uh, hold on, my ear itches and it's the right ear that I always keep covered. Now my headphones are falling off. If I may ask, what exactly did these collaborators share with you about cuisine on Aetheris? Surely you are aware we have an abundance of dishes and foods that you can emulate. Of course we are, but, well, it was only quite recently that we established contact. Even holding a conversation was a struggle at first. So imagine our surprise when they sent a mountain of books and documents with no clear instructions. The sheer amount of information was overwhelming. If it wasn't, uh, that, uh, it wasn't for the encyclopedia we, uh, I found, we would have been at a loss of where to begin. So we decided rather than divide our resources to prepare a variety of middling and potentially unsatisfying meals, it would be more efficient to devote our efforts to the production of a single, perfect food. Now that's all well and good, but man cannot live on raw carrots alone. Have you considered cooking them? You mean steaming, boiling, roasting, and the like? I suppose we could prepare the carrots in other ways, but our primary concern was efficiency. And what's more efficient than singing your teeth into a fresh carrot from the production? Rather strange approach, I take from one named Cooking Way, isn't it? Well, technically speaking, Cooking Way is my given name. When we first created, we were all named in the old tongue. You know, the otherwise impenetrable parlance the watcher speaks. After we received great tone of words, a dictionary that is, from our collaborators, we learned your language. Adverbs, garoons, present continuous verb conjunctions, just the basics. Then we found the terms related to our given tasks and used them to form new names. Aren't they helpful? No, not really, but that explains a great deal. Wherefore doubts did, did oh, wherefore did this thy kind deem such a change necessary? When the rest of your people arrive, we want them to be certain that they understand immediately which one of which each of, uh, what each of us does. We'd never be able to pronounce our original names anyway. I see. I hope our critiques, such as they are, were helpful to you. Though if you decide to preserve flora and fauna from Aetherius as well, we will, you would be able to offer passengers a more balanced diet. Until such day, I pray... Until such a day, I pray come sooner than later, it would appear there is not but carrots on the menu. Oh well. I think we've had a fill for carrots for now. Let's move on to other necessities, shall we? Our clothing production is sure to impress. This way. Oh, fun fact, if you find an enemy... If you find an enemy... It's Final Fantasy IV battle music. I hope he stops. He's still coming. He stopped. Here we are, the apparel production station. 
You chose to employ more traditional magics for the task, creation magics. Heidelin, in her infinite wisdom, blesses with the self same affinity for magic her people possessed. We have other amazing talents, of course, and I know you're dying to hear about them, and I will get you with the details another time. That said, we did run into a spot of trouble at first. Our magic alone was not sufficient to see our work done. In the end, we discovered crystallized ether was a wonderful catalyst that could provide us with the extra B, extra viz that we needed. My, how resourceful. Ah, the sweet sound of recognition. You'll be impressed to hear we've read all about your habit of changing attire to match your chosen profession. For the sake of efficiency, I presume, there has also been taken into account with our designs. But why take my word for it, when you can simply try on our clothes? Make yourselves known to the workers, and they will see to the rest. Hey, it's you, one of the visitors from Ether uh, one of the visitors from Ethereus. Goodness me, mapping away wasn't kidding. You really are smaller than the watcher. Oh, right, you're here to try on a set of clothes, yes? What would you have me fashion for you today? Something simple, yet functional. Hmm, simple and functional, right? Aha, this will only take a moment. Uh, I'm not wearing... There we are. All finished. A perfect fit if I do say so myself. Not too billowy or frilly, as you can see. Also light and terrible. Sure to serve you wherever your travels might take you. Would you look at that? Speechless. And here I thought you may not like it. If you want to try something else, speak with my fellow artisans. I'm sure they'd be happy to oblige. Am I supposed to... Aren't I supposed to be wearing something... Ah, there we go. That was weird that I didn't show up in the cutscene. Nope, it overrides. Uh, no one said you'd be coming. Uh, how can I help? Are you wish to my clothes, really? Oh, of course, it would be my honor. Did you have anything in mind? Surprise me. Uh, I think I can handle that. Let's see. Uh, this should do. See, it's not showing the mask again. So, best book yet. It's really a new concept incorporating an idea that's never been tried with clothing before. Fragrance! Can you smell the cards? Ah, uh, simply divine. I was worried how the concept would turn out when put to the proof, but it looks stunning on you. What's you going to show living way? I'm sure you can see what we come up with. I said surprise me, and they sure did surprise me. My, don't he look splendid? The result of much trial and error, but I know quality work when I see it. Shh, you needn't speak. I can see the adoration of the moon and the lovebirds in your eyes. No doubt your friends feel the same having stepped with our creations. Sorry to have kept you waiting. They insisted we sample all of their concepts ere we returned. Verily, tis an ensemble most becoming. And he's ac he actually likes it. The nerd. Ah, 
I think it's past time we return these clothes. I was so confident our garments would meet your approval. <sighs> Whatever are we doing wrong? The watcher taught us that in his time everyone wore the same robes. To do otherwise was against social etiquette. We thought we would appeal to modern taste by tailoring the robes to specific professions, but... Please, you mustn't be so hard on yourself. Should we resort to evacuating the people of Atheris, they will most certainly have need of your attire. It is clear you spared no effort in addressing our needs, but you must understand that we are not quite so homogenous. Speaking for myself, what I wear now better suits my taste, even if it is of inferior make. But there are others whose choices may be influenced by traditions or personal experience. Rather than make assumptions for the whole, you must consider the individual and the potential preferences. I fear we've underestimated the complexity and diversity of your people. Ah, <sighs> even if we memorized every tone we received, I doubt we'd have been much better. Maybe we're doing you with the service trying to shower you with our baubles and frippery, thinking it was for your benefit when you're better off on your own. There are some who might, do, who might agree, people who prefer to keep others at arm's length, even when they know they shouldn't. As one such formal fool, I'd like to ask you a question. This plan to evacuate and escape the final days. Did it account for the reflections of the source as well? Um, not that I'm aware of. We were born of Pydalin's love for Aetheris and the salvation of the people of that on that star, and that star alone has ever been our aim. Surely it's better to devote ourselves to saving one world than to divide our efforts across fourteen and risk failing them all. I suppose you're right. Living way, might we leave, might we have leave to explore the best way burial unattended? You've given us much to think about. Why certainly. Until later then. If I may, I should like to accompany thee a while longer. Really? I mean, you're more than welcome to. There's actually something I wish to speak with you about. Let's be off then, shall we? Well, I guess I'm on my own. Oh, who's that? Huh. Uh, my apologies. I wasn't trying to spy or anything. Everyone's been talking about the witnesses from Aetherus, and I wanted to see what was all the fuss about. I was excited at first, but well, now now I'm worried. What if the people of Aetherus refuse to come? What if we can't save them? Uh, it's clear we've made a mess of things. Oh, but wait. You still haven't visited the Thomas House. Once you see them, you'll understand how wonderful the moon truly is. I'm sure of it. I'll, I'll be waiting for you by the teleporter near the entrance. On well, the name's growing way, by the way. I'll see you soon. Well, you're here. You're really here. Well, thank you so much for. Uh, uh, sorry. What should I call you? My name's Noren. Noren the Safaris. Yeah, Cracky, even the names are amazing. Well, Niren, we'll be using this teleporter to enter the res residential area. Whenever you're ready. Ready in the teleporter. Oh, that's his voice. Quarters restricted due to reconstruction. Then where is it? Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh yeah! Hmm? 
I guess it just teleported me upstairs. A private audience, as thou didst request, for reasons I know not. Just a precaution. I'd rather I didn't have to ask the question at all, but I take my responsibilities very, very seriously. Do you and your friends by any chance find our accommodation wanting? Be honest, brutally even. It would be ungracious of me to belittle the efforts of thee and thine. Lovely sentiment, really. But the disappointment is writ plain on your comrades' faces. It's all the more frustrating since no one will come out and say what they find wanting. If there are faults in our work, we need to know. We can, we will do better. But time is not on our side. The final days will wait for no one. If your people are to be saved, we must take quick and decisive action. This vessel must serve as a home for as many passengers as possible for far longer than we may like. Which brings me to my request. Our collaborators on Atheris are doing what they can to prepare for the voyage. Would you be willing to go and lend them a hand? Having seen the moon for yourself, you could speak to its many splendors, learn what else they might require, and assuage whatever concerns they have. Wherefore wouldst thou entrust me with such a task? How to put it? You're the only one who appears not to be wholly unsatisfied with our work. Or quite good at pretending that's the case, at least. Calm, collected, tactful to a fault. Very particular with your words, too. You understand that, in the face of great danger, one cannot pursue perfection at the expense of practicality. The difficult choices must often be made for the greater good. <sighs> and so fate doth conspire to set my feet upon this path once more. Come again? Ah, idle musings. Tis no trifle, thou dost ask. Yet full well do I understand the urgency and necessity. I... Oh, dear me! Dear me! I was terribly sorry for the mix-up. <laughs> it's a bit of a malfunction. I hadn't realized the residential quarters were inaccessible, you see. But you're still in one piece. So, all's well that ends well, yes? Uh, won't happen again. I promise. That's uh, fine, girl in way. Huh. Gosh, that was embarrassing. I promise to be more careful from now on. Since the residential quarters are closed for now, I've rerouted the teleporter to allow travel between floors instead. Hopefully it proves useful in the meantime. Uh, a shame you couldn't see it, though. You really would have liked it. It may not seem like much, but we're playing for the spa longer than I would care to admit. Each time we woke up, we'd had a long discussion about how to save as many as we can. Felt like everyone had an opinion on this and that. But the one thing we all agreed on was that the people of Atheris wouldn't take action to save themselves until it was far too late. That's why we're striving to make the moon a vibrant and magical place they'd love to hope a chance to visit, rather than waiting for the flame of oblivion to get them onto, off their tails and force them to accept our invitation. The residential corners may not be up to the necessary standards just yet, but there are plenty of other places worth seeing. We've already had a look around the curatorium, but wait until you see what's waiting for you on the east end of the borough. Follow me.
Good, you're here. Through this door is the greatest end's veil. It was named because it was the end veil to end all veils. The most beautiful forest you'll ever see. You understand the people of Theris that you are taking leisurely walks through natural spaces and the like, so I'm sure you'll enjoy it. How about we start with the night stroll to the, fount to the fountain? This way. What do you think of the forest? Is it positively pleasant, simply sublime? I couldn't see the forest or the trees. I don't see any- wait, you mean- Tis as transcendent as bearing a face and a chuckle of plumage and taking a good long whiff. Uh, oh, oh, you only get that if you've ever done that quest, and that quest is gone now. Which bums me out. I didn't see any- wait, you don't need the crystals out there. Right you are! Our forest is made of crystals and constructs, dotting the landscape as far as the eye can see. In this place was a challenge, let me tell you. Since we were born here, we've never seen trees in person before, but let alone a forest. But the, the information sent by our collaborators is quite enlightening. But after much deliberation, we rather use crystalline constructs in place of living trees. And thanks to our atmospheric circulation system, the place produces air as clean as you find in a forest on a terrace. The fountain here behind us is powered by a rather large crystal adorning at the top, playing a vital... No, I guess that giant crystal right there. Well, and supplying us with fresh water. Much time and effort was spent making the most spherical spheres. I dare say the unparalleled around this speaks for itself. I don't know nothing more than a nice long stretch in a spot of real exist when I come up here. You look like you could deal with the stretch yourself. <laughs> mm. That's the spirit. I feel more relaxed simply by watching you. A site with many years spent building this place. It's not too much to ask. It's always been a dream of mine to take a walk through the forest with someone from a theirs. Call me, maybe. <gasps> you will. I'll be still my quivering whiskers. I was thinking, Niren, that I could be more helpful to you by teaching you a little about the moon and what it is we do. When we were first created, the moon's sole purpose was to hold Zodiac and there was absolutely nothing to be found here. Eventually, Hyden gave us a task, first a room with propulsion systems capable of facilitating travel to other stars. It sounds impressive, and I suppose in some respects it is, but it was only possible thanks to all the knowledge Highland shared with us. We also had a lot of time to get it done, 6,000 years give or take. But anyway, let's keep going. This may come as a surprise, but we didn't really begin building the habitable areas until after the propulsion systems were ready. Considering how long it took, we wish I wish we'd started sooner. Who'd have thought we needed four thousand years to make all of this? It certainly wasn't work you dare rush either. We had to create infrastructure and countless supporting systems, some of which wouldn't be operational until hundreds of years later. And then there was the brief period where our productivity came to a screeching halt, when that weird, bizarre red satellite was sent up from Atheris. The Allegan's mischief, I think. We thought maybe some new nefarious actor was colluding with Zodiac. All we could do was stand by and brace ourselves for the worst. I can't... Oh, he's humming. I can't tell you how relieved we were when Highland formed us of its destruction. Oh yes, there was much joyous humming that day. So, do you notice anything particular about the treetops? I mean, apart from the fact they're made of massive crystals and not trees. Uh, I'll give you a hint. It's the glowing rings emanating from the glowing spheres. Spheres. Along with the devices fixed in the ceiling, they fulfill a similar role to the, our sun, and do so better even. The sun and similar celestial objects in the great expanse radiate energy that is harmful to your bodies. The rings shield you from that energy while allowing you to bathe in the perfect amount of sunlight, or rather a close approximation of it. Pretty impressive, wouldn't you say? 
Oh, and if you look closely, you'll see different types of trees have ever so slightly different curvature. Yes, indeed, the forest truly is the greatest. Indeed. <sighs> there was something else I wanted to tell you about. Uh, oh, right. The propulsion system and the habitat facilities were completed around 2,000 years ago. And with that, the most important features were fit for purpose. Which was all well and good, except we still knew absolutely nothing of the present-day people of Ethereus. Why not go and visit Ethereus yourself, you might ask? Strictly forbidden, for our technology or even knowledge of the moon's true purpose exploited for evil ends, the results could be... disastrous. Then... Then there were a few more rejoinings, and it became increasingly difficult to converse with the high villain. Fearful we might lose the ability to communicate with her altogether, we beseeched her to find the people of Ethereus who could trust... We could trust to help. We're quite fortunate everything worked out as it did. Huh. You had Heidelin contact people for you. Hmm. <sighs> With the exception of routine inspections and maintenance, we remained asleep and waited to hope old Heidelin would find someone who would help us. Eventually she did, and through her power was waning, we were able to speak to them directly for a short while. We shared with them everything we could, including our knowledge of the heavens and means to travel here to the moon. We certainly didn't waste any time with what we taught them. No more than a few years later, after that, our collaborators found the means to convey messages and supplies to us from down below. With all the letters, books, and other resources sent us, we learned enough to start making more meaningful changes to the moon. And now you're here, hopefully enjoying yourself as much as I am. I knew you liked the great Ensville. I knew it! Thank you for coming here, by the way. I know it was just a walk through a forest, but it meant a lot to me. There you are. I think you've all received a grand tour. A shame we missed it. Growing way, I've been looking all over for you. Hmm. <sighs> oh, I uh, is this about the teleporting to the residential area? No, never mind that. We have more pressing matters at hand. I'll be calling an emergency meeting shortly, and your attendance is required. Really? Can't mind why you need me there, but if you insist. We won't be away long, so you are more than welcome to continue looking about the barrel. But come along, growing way. Before we arrive, you seem to be in the midst of a rousing conversation with your guide. Did you learn anything of import? We are, in fact, standing in the forest. Also about our their collaborators. They spent 12,000 years preparing this. Whether you pointed out or fast approaching, I can certainly understand their restlessness, but still. It remains to be seen that the people can be persuaded to evacuate when there are yet no signs of the final days. What's more, the technology of this place defies imagination. I doubt there are many who would readily come to terms with living in such surroundings. Whoever these collaborators are, unless they possess the world's most charming personalities or means to forcibly evacuate people, they will make great resistance, a great deal of resistance. Indeed, even if faced with annihilation, the decision to fake, forsake all one knows can be made cannot be made lightly. Forgive me, my friends, but I must beg your leave. There is another matter which yet begs for mine attention. Of course, we can accompany you if you like. Nay, that will not be necessary, if you'll excuse me. Hmm. It is clear now difficult decisions lie ahead of us. Preparations for the evacuation on Ethereus is indeed crucial, but I am not yet willing to forsake the world and its reflections, and I trust that I am not alone in my reticence. Did Orion J seem strange to you? More strange than usual, I mean. I know he has a penchant for keeping his own counsel, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't worried. Let's go and see if he's alright. 
We still have an hour remaining here and see what else can we can learn about the final days. If we hurry, perhaps we can catch up to him. Ah, there we go. Doth yonder Shakespearean walketh up along its path. Hmm. Oh, Jay seems to be heading to the entrance. Best way, Burrows. Orion Jai ventures off into Bar Elemental and for reasons unknown, you must tread carefully, else he might sense your presence. Naren is ultimata. Shit. Who's there? No one. The wind. He's running.
Thine arrival is timely as ever. Thou didst chance to overhear my conversation with Living Way, I presume? Twas not mine intent to move in shadow. Nevertheless, I have been asked to do that and more yet again. Is it so plain that these strangers could intuit it at a glance? My capacity for silence and secrecy? And duplicity? And Grahatia did contrive to deliver the first at the price of his own life. I was complicit in the scheme. A sacrifice averted for a mercy. Would that I could say the same for Minfilia. One life for one world. And by that bloody bargain brokered by my hand were the Scions robbed of a dear comrade and Flamine her beloved daughter. Two souls whose selflessness was beyond measure, whose resolve was unshakable. They would not be moved even had I thought to protest. But protest I did not. Far from it. I pushed them forward. No effort did I make to seek out alternatives, ones that would not demand such terrible costs. That resignation weighed heavy on my mind, as does the memory of another lost to mine inaction. Dearest Moonbreather, who did face death unflinching that we might secure a means to bring low the Asians. In her hour of need, I did naught. Dutiful disciple of Louisois, ever looking to the greater good. Had I shut mine eyes and bid her live instead, mayhap she would be with us today. Selfish wants, born of everlasting regrets. Most days I put them from my mind, but could think of naught else when asked to swallow the same bitter draught. Subterfuge and sacrifice. Mayhap the right moral choice, but one I regard with great trepidation. The calamity of Amorot was a tragedy beyond reckoning, one which must never again come to pass. Thus must we struggle, haunted by ghosts of those we have lost, clinging to those we pray we can yet save. But what of those we cannot? How do we make peace with the dreadful algebra of necessity? Have faith, Oriange. Sage counsel indeed. I see. Wisdom as befits a great worm. Curious that he should think thee in need of such encouragement. Strange. Scarcely can I remember when last we spoke alone, and so candidly. I thank thee. For all my supposed skill with words, I find it difficult to express such private thoughts. As for the Loperitz proposition, I will take time and consider how to respond. It would be to our mutual benefit if we could converse more openly with our aspiring caretakers. A concern I should be glad to address on the Scion's behalf. 
To dispense with all pretense and bear one's heart to another is a frightening thing indeed. But we cannot move forward ere we take that bold first step. A lesson I have learned many times before. And today. In truth, my reason for traveling hither was to effect a plan of my own, a plan which may pave the way forward for us all. May, I say, for there is no guarantee of success. This is the reason I set out alone, that failure should come of it, would be mine to bear alone. Yet thou standest before me with proffered hand and open heart. It would be remiss of me to refuse thy amity, and so I ask, wouldst thou join me in mine endeavor? I thank thee for accompanying me. This simple plan, in truth, we shall not be long away from best way burrows. Difficult decisions must needs be made in the coming day, but I nevertheless believe we are one mind and desire to save the people of Atheris. To make clear our resolve to the Lovarits, I would offer them a gift, but making it doth require a single ingredient. Ah, an abundance of sponge goy. Excellent. I chanced to spy this aggregation when crossing Zodiac's erstwhile prison. Using a spell taught to me by the Nemo, I believe I shall, sp shall spice for the gift I would fashion. The magic will require considerable comfort concentration. However, might I prevail upon thee to stand while I perform the incantation? There, tis done. A magic ink every ounce as efficacious as that crafted by the Nemo. Rare is the occasion I would conjure my own, but nevertheless a most useful skill. The resulting product is admittedly possessed of no pre-natural properties, but its hue is of my own choosing, which I pray the Lopperts will appreciate. Uh, Niren, Uriange, oh thank goodness, I thought you have been eaten, or perhaps fallen into a crater. Ishtola has been looking all over for you, Niren. She says she needs to speak with you about something most urgent. Dire, even. It's also quite clear that she wishes to speak with Niren alone, which means I'm afraid you must stay behind, Orianche. But worry not, it just so happens we need help with an errand. Delivering a package from the Watcher's Palace to Bestway Barrows. It's quite large and heavy, perhaps even too heavy for we poor Lopperts. And we would be ever so grateful if you can lend us a hand. That's convenient. Suspiciously convenient. 
Are you insinuating I would betray the trust of Hyden's chosen? Or worse, do anything to risk on getting your stellar's bad side? She clearly not want to be crossed. No way to wait. Now off with you. Mm, she's right. Sure, she's right. Worry not, Niren. I shan't be long. Oh, Naren, we thought you'd be away far longer. You said you had something for me? A dire emergency? I said no such thing. But as you are here, I could use your assistance on a small matter. Running Way, a companion of Growing Way, apparently has much to tell us of the final days. The problem is, however, is that he determined to live up to his name. He doesn't even stay still long enough for us to hold a conversation. Is there any way he's likely to stop and rest, or perhaps there's a way to slow him down? Oh, what's, what's the rush? I was thinking we should wait here, maybe enjoy a cold mug of carrot juice and... No, of course, if you're really that important, you would try using these balls of moose flesh, not to be confused with the other thing. Ahem, <clears throat> Runaway's other notable feature is insistent chatter, so you'll have no trouble finding him in a crowd. When you do, try lobbing your balls at him. Crude, but if it proves effective, he was the fur he was here in the greatest Ensville when we last saw him. Let us split up and find him. Do not hit the unassuming Lopperts. Hmm. Oh, that's an unassuming Lopperts. That's also an unassuming Lopperts. All right, that has to be running away. Dang's fast. Got him. Uh, uh, what happened? Oh, I'm sorry. He, that one was running. Oh, I guess because it wasn't a chatterbox. Not that one. Oh, there he is. Bam! Oh shit. Oh crap. Oh god. Bam. Ah, oh, that's smarts. Let's be joking. This is funny. wrote that line. Hmm? Yes, I'm running away. Do you mind explaining why you hit me in the face with your balls of moose flesh? Yeah, I hear you knew about the final days. I'm highly knowledgeable about the final days. Ha! Huh, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever had since I woke up. Who told you that joke? As we got time to look into the final days when there's so much to do before the great voyage. It's true that Highland did impart us some knowledge of the event, but I know as much as any other law part around here. Less probably. I don't know why anyone would think it's funny to go around telling people I'm an expert, but I better hope they don't get my paws on them. Oh, I'm sorry you couldn't be more pub, but if there's nothing else, I have work to do. And I'm off!
I can find neither hide nor hair of him. How did you fare? Oh, I found him all right, and apparently he knows nothing. So, he knows no more than the others. Can't you explain yourself, growing way? Well, you see, I, uh, uh <clears throat> I misremembered. Yes, I misremembered. Terribly sorry about that. I'm afraid I'm drawing a blank, though. For his mind, I can't remember who I was thinking of. On an unrelated note, what a very on Jake. I assume you spoke with him earlier, but did he say when he'll be returning? Uh, the Lubberts have him running an errand. On his way to the Watcher's Palace with Living Way. Between growing away sudden lapse of memory and our lack of other leads, maybe our time would be better spent lending Urian J a hand. Oh, and now, hold on a moment. Yeah, it's all coming back to me. Yes, I remember. The information you're looking for is in the archives. Yes, that's where you'll find all sorts of useful knowledge, including that pertaining to the final days. Oh, what to do, what to do. I promised Libby Way I would help, but... No, I promised I'd help, so that's what I'll do. The archives are on the second floor on the main plaza on the eastern wing. Follow me. I suspect the Lopperts are up to something, but if there's all to be learned in the final days, I think it's best we play along, for now at least. The archives are right through this door, but it seems to be locked. I guess we'll just have to go and find whoever has the key. Growing way enough. If you're not asked to tell us at the final days, you need only say so. We can ill afford to be wasting time as well as you know. Did you yourself not tell us we must act quickly? Yes, yes we did, but... The moon was to be the perfect paradise for the people of Theris, and we're running out of time to make everything ready for their arrival. We'd hope you see the wonders we'd have to offer, but you found nothing but faults and flaws in our work. Only one you saw our potential, so others must be kept here. Ah, so that's Living Way's game. Rest in the balance, circles, and failing that, lock us away so we can't, pl uh, can't put the plan at risk. Everyone except Orion J. He understands what is at stake. What must be done? I fear you misjudge us, Growing Way. Never have we decried the notion of using the moon as a means of escape. That said, my heart breaks at the thought of abandoning Aetherus and her reflections to the doom. If there is a way to avert the final days, I wish to find it. We all do. We may fail, but our efforts will never be at the expense of your plans. But why would you take the risk? There's no room for ifs and maybes now. The people of Aetherus will escape here to the moon. They'll be safe, and we'll finally get to see all their happy, smiling faces. I'm sorry, but we can't let you leave. We just can't. Do what you must, but try not to hurt them. I'll be back in a moment. Don't do anything rash while I'm gone. If we die, they all overwhelm us with sheer numbers. So we knock these ones out, split up, and make our way to the exit. Agreed. Let us reconvene while Argos waits outside. Alright, you three are mine. We need reinforcements. How oh, that hurt. Blah. Uh oh. Growing 
Growing away tends to stop you. Please come quietly. Growing away. This is not going to end well for you. I'm sorry, you made me do this. We have to save them. Good, you're here. <clears throat> Let's hurry to the Watcher's Palace and find Orion Chain. And uh, what, pray tell, do we seek at the Watcher's Palace? Here, the time has come for you to return to Etheris and help your brethren prepare for their journey here and beyond. Forgive me, Living Way, but I cannot in good conscience proceed with this plan. Huh? But what about the final days? The death and the doom? Oh, we have to hurry before it's too late! Your unflagging commitment to your duty is endearing, to say the least. Oh, bugger! Ooh, he swore. Be at ease. They bear you no grudge, nor do I. How could we? Having come to understand your purpose. For millennia, you and yours worked tirelessly towards the singular purpose of this heavenly vessel's construction. An arduous feat by any measure. It's clear you have spared no effort. Why, your very names are a testament to your dedication. Our... our names? I'm not sure I understand what you're getting at. Names are an expression of the self. A declaration of one's hopes and aspirations. Your use of contemporary, uncomplicated nomenclature doth ensure clarity of purpose. There can be no doubt that your love for the people of Atheris is boundless and pure. Remember, I've toiled in anticipation of the day when this vessel might be needed. 
All I've ever wanted was to meet those she cherished so dearly. To serve and serve well. That goes for all of us. Don't you see? So help us. Help us help them. Lead them here where we can keep them safe. If there's anything wrong with what we've built, we'll fix it. We'll make it right. Your works want not for repair. Yet there remaineth much for you to learn of men and your own kin besides. Singing way, thy name bespeaketh more than the simple marriage of rhythm and rhyme. The songs of Etheris are beyond counting and span the length and breadth of emotion. Maps are monuments to man's pioneering spirit and his devotion to charting the furthest reaches of our star. Many have devoted their lifetimes to exploratory pursuits, to venture unto the highest mountains and the deepest oceans in search of unknown frontiers. And thou, my friend, I... Oh, I do not think we have met. My... My name is Puddingway. Ah. Uh. Puddingway? Yes, indeed. A name of deep and abiding significance, I'm sure. But one perhaps better communicated through delicious deeds than tasteless words. A judicious application of fey magics at a later juncture may be appropriate. <clears throat> and living way. <laughs> Tis no easy feat to convey the significance of thy moniker. Hmm. When I was a bookish boy, a dear friend of mine was fond of peppering me with questions as I read, to my occasional annoyance. One day, I posed to her a question of mine own. What doth it mean to live? After much contemplation, she proffered this answer. The anticipation of a half-read story's conclusion. The hope today's mistake may serve as tomorrow's lesson. The wish that a new acquaintance may one day call thee friend. She believed it to be all these moments and more. I... I want to understand, but... I, too, still labor to find mine own answer. T'would be my pleasure to assist you and yours in embarking on a journey of self-discovery and enlightenment. For thee. Ink as blue as the waters of Etheris. Made in haste, though I assure thee, the quality has not suffered for it. The people need not be persuaded by honeyed words. Nay, I have faith they shall do what is right in due course. Until they do, I beg your patience, friends. And with that ink, let us fill the empty pages of Living Ways Compendium. An open exchange of ideas will surely afford you all a better understanding of modern man, and with it, ideas for improvements and renovations. But more importantly, it shall empower us to together find a way forward. I hope you're right. Thank you for this lovely gift. There you have it. 
I shall remain with the Loperitz to ensure that all is in order. Though we must needs prepare for every eventuality, you would all agree that the evacuation of our star is a last resort. To accept failure is to accept the demise not only of our star, but that of Reen's, of all reflections, and the souls that call them home. Which is why I have every faith that you shall fight to the last, that such drastic measures may prove unnecessary. Should the worst come to the worst, and I pray deeply that it won't, I'll take comfort in knowing preparations were made under your watchful eye. I, thou mayest be assured that if calamity cometh, not a soul will be left behind, if being the operative term. Huh? Oh wow, I almost forgot I had this in my pocket. That flower. How came into how came it into your possession? Oh, uh Heidelman kinda gave it to me. How very like her. Guided by its light, you may come to know her true intentions. Intentions which remain a mystery even to us. In our time, we called it Elpis. You would do well to remember the name. Elpis. Back in the pocket you go. Uh, I hate to interrupt, but... I feel like I need to make amends for all the secrecy. Think nothing of it. We haven't been the most gracious of guests. Do convey our apologies to Growing Way and the others. But of course! And when next we welcome more guests from Atheris, we'll have learned to be much more hospitable hosts. Oh, and circling back to the matter of inappropriate secrecy, we ought to discuss our benefactors. Agreed. The Charlian Forum, yes? What? How did you know? The more I heard, the more obvious it became. The Forum's aims align closely with those of your anonymous patrons. A telling coincidence would be an understatement. Though had we not taken it upon ourselves to peruse certain restricted tones in Labyrinthos, we might still be unaware of their plans. But let us continue this discussion upon our return. I dare say we have kept Alphino and the others waiting long enough. So girl, I look narrow, like swords are off. I'm sure, glad to hear it. Cool. It was a relief to see Living Way was pleased with my gift of ink. To serve and serve well. Though the knowledge may be lacking, their boundless love is a blessing without peer. Be no easy task to prepare them for what needs be done, but gladly do I embrace this duty, even if doth necessitate that we, necessitate that we part ways for a time. But give me my absence, but I have the utmost faith in you, in all our fellow scions. When next I return to Atheris, I pray I find you in all in good health and good spirits. With the love reds in Oriante's capable hands, we needn't worry about our affairs here and about affairs here in our absence. Knowing the face of the earthly collaborators, there is much to discuss with Elfino and the others. Let us return to the Tower of Babel. Our battle for the star will soon begin in earnest, and we must be prepared. Bye, everybody.
gods, I can scarcely believe we went to the moon and back. But we'll have time to reflect on that later. Right now, we need to head back to Camp Broken Glass and deliver a thoroughly detailed report to Lucia. I'd like to know how everyone is getting on here as well. They don't just begun to treat the temple prisoners when we left. I share your curiosity, but warning off allies of the final days is of greater importance. I speak not only of the contingent, of course, but the head of every state and nations must know what we have learned. Also, we know not when or where or in what manner the final days will begin to manifest, so we will see that everyone is prepared. Agreed. Though we may wish to stress the importance of discretion, lest the public be sent into a panic. Not that anyone in any position of responsibility should need to be told as much, but it bears repeating. Anyway, first things first, the camp broke a glass. It's good to see you all again. No worse for wear for your lunar adventure, I hope. We've done what we can for now, but believe me, we intend to tell you all about it. Before we do, might you tell us what's become of Garlemald in our absence? We succeeded in subduing the tempered inside the Tower of Babel. We took many alive, but combined with those who are already in our custody, the number requiring care has grown exponentially. The, uh, mm, the inclement conditions have made it difficult, if not impossible, to treat them all here, so we have petitioned the aid of the Allied Nations. Some are understandably hesitant to proffer assistance, particularly those that were but recently subjected to Imperial occupation. That said, several others have agreed to grant them refuge for treatment. With the assistance of oh, uh, still Lucia, with the assistance of your fellow scions, we endeavoured to see them safely transported and su subsequently cured for uh, their tempering. With all the tempered, will all the tempered be relocated? No, not all. We have sufficient shelter to attend to those treatments has begun, and enough healers have volunteered to remain until their patients have recovered. Ulysses is one such patient, though he is not fit to receive visitors. To be told it was a miracle he and those in his company were not harmed in the chaos. Not for Alpha, no, and Alizé's timely assistance, I dare say none that would be with us today. In light of recent developments, have the Alliance leaders come to any decisions regarding Garlemald? Given the tremendous ramifications of what has happened here, it will take time to determine what must be done. In the meantime, they intend to work with the Eastern Alliance to keep a close watch over the provinces. We have other news to share. Shortly after Anima was defeated, we received reports that each and every tower has vanished. For our mercy, the process was apparently not quite as violent as you experienced in Thavnir. Those who were trapped within them have been rescued and are receiving treatment. Thanks in this endeavor, the beast tribes have been received instructions in the magic's need to cure tempering. Master Matoya is no doubt thrilled the mother Poxy affords her so many visitors. Yes, we are grateful for our ongoing efforts, as well as those of our comrades near and far. As for the contingent, several of our members have been granted leave to return to their homelands after the transfer of temper has been completed. That's good. 
This CNI will remain, along with a small force, to continue offering aid to those in, here in Garlemald. The Empire may be no more, but there are yet those who call these lands home. I believe that accounts for recent events. So, what are the moon and the Telophoroi? Alright, so, you gotta bear with me because this is gonna be absolutely a lot. Well, Fendaniel is no more, and. The final days. Gods, I pray your victory will mark the end of our troubles. There's still much we don't know, but the Alliance leaders must be told. Would you be willing to contact them in our stead? Yes, of course. I will send word forthwith. We will also release your fellow scions from the present duties, that they may return to Shalian. Your energies are uh, spent finding a means to avert the coming apocalypse. Speaking of your fellow scions, you will be happy to hear that Mistress Kryl, though still on the mend, has been moved to the Baldessian Annex and given to Tataru's care. Thank you. I look forward to seeing them both upon our return. Let's be on our way then. <clears throat> One last thing, if I may. After your confrontation with Zodiac, you said Xenos took his leave and in all likelihood has returned here to Gallimald. I reminded the Spet Scouts and tried to ascertain his whereabouts, but first wish to speak wish to ask if you believe there is merit in doing so. Well, if they found them, they probably wouldn't return to them to tell the tale, unfortunately. Uh, I suppose you're right. To dispatch good soldiers in pursuit of such a beast would send them to their deaths. Very forget I entertained the notion. While on the subject of Xenos, the Tenth Legion has made an official proclamation. They denounced the Crown Prince and condemned his role in the Empire's downfall. This very title has become a source of shame among his former subjects, and that its continued use serves only to hinder relations with foreign nations. For this reason, he has been declared Xenos Vieta Galvis, outcast, and enemy of Garlemald. And then he is no more, and now his own people turn against him. Seems so he's not but his bloodlust to keep him company. Better that than an army to see it sated. At any rate, I will not keep you longer. I pray you safe passage back to Shalian. Man, I kind of turned traitor against Garnwald, and they didn't even seem to slap Beater on me. That's heavy. Oh, someone just arrived in Charlene. Welcome back, Darren. We were so terribly worried about you. It was plain I've caused my own fair share of worry, and for that, I apologize. Hylan called to me the day you entered the Tower of Babel. Her pleas were faint but desperate. They would want you were quite a vessel to carry out a will. Kamrata feels like a dream, barely remembered. Body flowing through the live stream toward Garlemald. My great consciousness, it was all aches and frostbite. Exhausted of ether, so exhausted in fact, I could only laugh, for it was in that moment I understood Raha's weariness from the Tower of Salt. Well, I could laugh. Well, would that I could laugh at a time like this, though. We prevented Zodiac from being unleashed upon the world. I'm curious to how, know what else took place on the moon. A lot of things. Ah, perhaps we should wait for the others to join us before you give your account. Let's re reconvene in the main hall once they've arrived.
Oh, please, why couldn't this be voiced? Sorry to keep you all waiting. Not at all. We understand you've been quite busy. Will Orion J be joining us? No. Duty keeps him away, I'm afraid. Though Nira can explain why better than I. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... After clearing the Tower of Babel and going to the moon... Things went sideways. And, uh... They're, uh, well, they're like little bunnies and Orion J's with them. The final days as befell Amarot. And we are to escape via the moon? What of the source and its reflections? We have no intention of standing by while the world falls to ruin. So, how do we stop this? Unfortunately, we have no answers at the present. If the celestial currents have grown stagnant, it was a case in time of Amarant, the solution would be to alter the flow of ether throughout the entirety of the star. The ancients accomplished this by summoning Zodiac, sacrificing half the star's population in doing so. But to go without saying that such a sacrifice must not, cannot be repeated. Which leaves the daunting task of identifying the underlying catalyst of the final days, which a feat even the Amartines could not accomplish. Unfortunately, we found no clues in Mari Levantorum. There's still much we don't know about the catastrophe, let alone what may have caused it. The final days were marked by corruption of the Amartines' creation magics, but we command no such power. Which invites the question, what havoc is in store for us? If we knew that much, perhaps we could draw some parallel with the events of the past, thereby form some semblance of a plan. Perhaps we should start with the forum then. Having worked with the Lovreds in secret all this time, there's surely more they can tell us. Uh, forgive the interruption, but I have urgent news. The forum is holding a public assembly in the plaza outside. Some sort of announcement. What is Father up to now? There's only one way to find out. I thank you all for gathering here on such short notice. This day we must speak of grave affairs and their implications for the future of Charlian, nay, of this very star. Said affairs concern all citizens, and so we have called for a public assembly. You may have heard rumors of the Talophoroi and the havoc these madmen wreak abroad. Under normal circumstances, we would pay little heed to petty disturbances outside our borders. The final days, however, are another matter altogether. For we dare not ignore these prophetic words of Eld. The end bearers will come, ushering chaos and calamity. The final days descend and devour the very star. I've never heard this prophecy. Is it true? Will all that really happen? Calm yourselves. The time has come to speak of the Forum's most sacred duties. But first...
give voice to the voiceless. Let bindings be unbound. By unanimous decree, I declare the enchantment broken. Master Leveilleur, if you would. Very well. You can tell which ones are animated because the ones are brighter. Because they're being rendered with the light in mind. Not the stationary ones who have no light upon them. Also, there's three of the same guy in the crowd. 270 years ago. Our forebears began an expedition in the Dravanian hinterlands, in search of a route to access the Ethereal Sea. This much is public knowledge. Their findings, however, would become the Forum's most closely guarded secret. What those researchers discovered in the hinterlands was not a passage unto the Ethereal Sea, but the very heart of our star, and Hydaelyn herself. She spoke to them of a calamity that would extinguish all life, and of a means by which we might be spared. The moon. Tis in truth, a gargantuan vessel built to serve as sanctuary for her children and deliver them from this doom. Much like Nuncref's hope in ages past, it will bear the people of a world in the throes of death to a new home. Needless to say, this will be no small undertaking. To facilitate the great work, the Forum has maintained close contact with the servants of Hydaelyn, who presently reside on the moon. Convinced that the foretold end was all but inevitable, we began amassing a wealth of knowledge. Not merely for the betterment of our nation, but in preparation for the journey to come. You reveal this to us now? By the gods, how long do we have? While we cannot say with certainty, we believe the hour to be nigh. We received a transmission from the moon suggesting as much not long ago. Which is why we must in earnest begin preparations for the great exodus. For his impressive contributions, and the leadership he demonstrated during our withdrawal from Dravania, we have elected Master Leveilleur to oversee this initiative. Fellow scribes and scholars, my countrymen, we face a threat of unprecedented scale. We must challenge the trials before us with Composure and conviction if we are to find salvation. The wisdom of Charlion has ever been a shining beacon in the darkness, and so it shall continue to be. It is our solemn charge to see our heritage preserved for future generations. For those who will come after, we will brave a new frontier. Administrative edicts will be relayed to all major institutions ere long. In the meantime, carry on with your duties. With that, I hereby call this assembly to a close.
Do you remember what Mother told us when we visited home? That it wasn't until after we were born that Father seemed to lose himself in his work. If that great work of his was the evacuation of this star, then... Yes. It wasn't for his benefit. Would you mind waiting here a moment? I wish to speak with Father before we leave. <laughs> yeah. Well, keep it civil, you know. I may look daggers at him, but I will neither speak nor draw them. If it's all the same to you, I have a few choice words to share with Father as well. So, come to call us cowards and bid us join your fruitless battle against the inevitable. Nay, we do not object to the Forum's proposal. On the contrary, those who wish to flee have every right to do so. Orianger is cooperating with your associates on the moon to ensure that all is ready should evacuation be our only recourse. Then whatever your business, I suggest you be brief. Though we cannot boast the boundless wisdom of Charlian, we have first-hand knowledge of foreign cultures and have conversed with no small number of peoples. These experiences have taught us fundamental truths that cannot be recorded in any tome nor charted on any map. The beating heart of this planet is its people, many of whom would give anything, even their lives, to protect the lands they love. Many may choose to join you in the end. But what of those unwilling or unable, for whom escape will never be an option? What would you have them do? To ignore the plight of those one might conceivably save is not wisdom, Father. It is indolence. This is why we choose to fight. We'll not ask for your understanding, Father. Only that you don't turn a blind eye to the good we have done. That we can still do. We're not children in need of protection. Hold fast to your principles and let the world burn if it please. But we believe there is still another way. And if there is, we will find it. You see if we don't. Do as you will. Just stay out of our way. Were he not so consumed with self-righteousness, he might tell you how proud he is of you both. Bold words call for bold action. And there'll be no turning to your father, should plans go awry. As if I ever would. So long as there are those who wish to stay and fight for this star, we have to do what we can to help them. And if we're to do that, we'll need to be well rested. Wouldn't you agree? And having triumphed over what we once thought to be the source of all evil, I can think of no one in greater need of at least a dozen winks. Shall we then? To the Annex. To prepare for tomorrow.
I'm lazy. <laughs> Girl, Tusman's Four made a rather momentous announcement. So, there's to be a great exodus, is there? In mind of my narrow escape from the Isle of Val, the realization of running the mixture of relief and regret after. Why me? I asked myself. Why me? Why us? Why now? Why wonder? There's no use fretting over the cosmic morality, or lack thereof. We're here, and we're getting through this together. And who knows, maybe with my luck, we'll rub off on everyone granting a narrow escape. There's no harm in praying as much, though. Oh, but enough of my rambling. I'm sure you're exhausted. Your chamber awaits. This is Bonoy looking at me. Bonoy? Nope. Vision. Okay. Wait, who's that? There's a come knocking. Whoever could it be? Why, it's gonna be Yashtola this time because I chose Graha last time and I've seen all the others, and I like Yashtola. <coughs> You're still awake. Good. Might I trouble you to stand still for a moment? Absolutely. Hmm. Nothing appears out of the ordinary. Is everything okay? A precautionary measure. You will recall that serving as a vessel for abundant light in the first very nearly ended poorly. In your recent battle on the moon, you were almost certainly exposed to similar, if not greater, forces. Fortunately, from what I can see, you and your ether are none the worse for wear. Would that Reen were here to confirm my assessment. To think you actually found yourself in a direct confrontation with Zodiac. As if Xenos gallivanting about in your body was not misfortune enough. Did you so grossly offend every single deity in a past life that they saw fit to place a curse upon your soul? Uh... <laughs> Forgive me. That was in poor taste. I recall vividly how battered and broken it was in the depths of Amarot. Would that you could have seen it with your own eyes. Mayhap then you would understand why the greater part of me is glad you did not. It was... a horror beyond description. Promise me you will be careful. That you will seek my counsel if you feel unwell. Absolutely. That puts my heart at ease, if only a touch. I suspect it will grow colder as the night wears on. So do be sure to stay warm. Sleep well. May the shadows keep you. May the shadows keep you. Master Matoya. <sighs> All right. short while earlier in the Alamegan Quarter. Thousands of miles away. Hey, I know that guy. Thank One the in red. gods that tower is gone. 
The sight of it was enough to make me sick. Thank the Ilsebar contingent, more like. Word is, they fought their way into Garlemald and toppled the bloody thing themselves. Not just the one, neither. All the towers have up and vanished. Aye, I heard the same. Commander Aldin and his troops helped keep casualties to a minimum, too. But is it true they brought back tempered Galleon soldiers? As Commander Aldin tells it, they've a treatment for that now. But don't you worry. Cured or not, they've no plans to bring them into the city proper. I see. Well, that's a relief then. I know we've brothers and sisters among the lot, but I can't say I'm eager to welcome them home. Wanted to think about it for a while yet. They're to be looked after in Alagana for the time being. Meanwhile, in Ishgard, thousands of miles away. Hey, I know that guy. Hey, I know that. I know those two in the background. I know Arabelle too. Another day. Another commission of paramount importance. Well, what have we here? Hmm. Hey, are you all right? That? No. The shadows play tricks. Nothing more. The towers are gone. And the Garlean threat is abated. And yet, why does it feel as though it's about to get much, much worse? Ah, finally, part one over. Next is part two next weekend. Ugh, good night, everybody.